Gen X since August of last year. Okay. So, so Carmen obviously has been here for a short time, but she has over 17 years of experience in network marketing with Avon and Rodan and Fields. And uh, she lives in Chicago, so she gets the cold like I do, uh, but originally from Puerto Rico. So That's it's right. kind of fun to get some Puerto Rican juice in here. Um, <laughs> she loves um, wellness and CrossFit. And her favorite thing to do in the summer is paddle boarding and a little winter wine tasting, which we all like a little bit of that. She has two children, 22 and 23, and fosters puppies. So you know, if you foster puppies, you got to be a good person, right? <laughs> So you have to have a so lot much. of patience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for being on. Um, we're excited to hear you share your story and uh, we'll probably have some questions for you, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me today. I know everybody has a super busy schedule and I love, love to talk to leaders, especially on Zoom and hopefully soon we'll be doing live events. But um just wanted to know from a show of hands, how many of you have been with Isogenics for less than a year? If you can just raise your hand or uh, just some motion or put a reaction on your screen. Show of hands, everyone's been here for more than a year? Wow, so you guys are tenure. You're like OGs, right? Uh, we got one, so that's great. But you know, um, I uh, thank you, Heidi, for the introduction. I have been in network marketing, like she mentioned, for 17 years, and I have been in different industries like um, the cable industry, uh, fundraising, staffing, consumer goods. And I will tell you that there's nothing like network marketing. And it's not just about the earning opportunity and having your own business, but I think the, the events that created a community is something that is so different and just the recognition in general that companies usually do as part of network marketing. You won't see that in a lot of other companies. You might see something kind of similar, but you know, my experience with some, in some other companies, like um, I used to work for a company that rhymes with lay and uh, the recognition was, this is the week. And after this week, we're done. Like we don't care anymore. It's next week. And so I just absolutely fell in love with network marketing. And my first event was actually at the Rosemont in Chicago. And I would tell you, um, I'll never forget this because I have been with um, CNN for eight years. And then I was with a fundraising company and I went into this room that were having a celebration of their launch of the holiday season. And they told me, come after lunch. So I came in and this room was full. It was like about 5,000 people. They have oversold. So people are being sent to a second floor and people are dancing. You can feel the, the floor shaking when they were, I mean, they were just so crazy. The execs were on the, um, the uh, stage and they were dancing to money, money, money. And they were like rolling like this drum roll with raffles, giving out $500 to people like Oprah and you get 500 bucks. And it was just crazy, but so much fun. And I was sitting on the back of this room going, you know, I think I might like this opportunity. I think I'm going to enjoy network marketing. And um, I'm telling you, I've never looked back. I took a leap of faith to go to the chip company for about a year and a half. And it was just not, it was just not what network marketing is. So besides, again, like I mentioned, sometimes we're so hang up on you know, try to get people because we want to be part of our team, but really like the community and the events, it's what really drives it. And just to hear the stories I've heard, I mean, so many different stories throughout my career that um, I think sometimes even you guys in your role become kind of like a therapist sometimes, right? Like you meet somebody and they tell you their whole life story and you're like, oh, I just go to say hello. I wasn't expecting all that. But um, that's just kind of what it creates on network marketing. So again, I was born, raised in Puerto Rico, went to college in Milwaukee crazy. That tells you a lot about my personality. I went to Marquette. Yes. And, um, and then I moved to Atlanta. That's right. I moved to Atlanta and I spent eight years in Atlanta, uh, working for CNN, got married, moved. I've moved seven times in 25 years. So I've lived in Knoxville, Tennessee. I have lived in um, New York. I have lived in Colorado. I've been to back to Michigan twice. And then I moved to Chicago because I have a lot of friends here from college and moving so much, it was hard to, as your kids get older, anybody here has kids that are over 20 or over 18, right? So it's hard to meet new friends if you move to a new place because 
you're not doing those games anymore. Thank God you're not sitting through seven hours of uh, baseball and uh, basketball, but still you want to have some friends. So I moved back to Chicago and a lot of my roommates from college are here and I love it here. Um, you know, another thing that I love about network marketing is the launch of new products. And you guys know about Collagen Elixir. Guess how many bottles we've sold so far of Collagen Elixir? To Spice Check. You got 6 million. Yep. A little bit over 6 million right now. And I have never, ever seen a growth, a launch like that. I mean, Rodan and Fields, we launched. Um, Lash Boost, which was in 2017 when they launched, 2016 when they launched Lash Boost. And that product was $150. And people just bought Lash Boost. Like a lot of people just came to Rodan and Field just to get their lashes look longer and beautiful. And so I would say if you're not riding this momentum, you got to get on it because collagen is the hottest thing that is right now, no matter if it's liquid or powder, but ours is really good. And so if you're not using it, or if you started using it and you have friends that are not using it, you just got to tell them like, hey, 30 day guarantee your money back. Like it's just really, really good. Um, there is a training on Isogenics business slash calls with Taylor Mayhem. And she talks for 30 minutes just about why is our collagen so great. So I encourage you to go to Isogenics business slash calls. And it was, um, I think it's like the end of February. I was hosting her, but she spoke for 30 minutes only about collagen. So if you just want to get like, you know, five things, why our collagen is so great so that you can share with others, I would encourage you to do that. So why am I an isogenics? Um, I came from first starting in beauty and, and um, makeup and jewelry, which was Avon. I spent 13 years with them. And that's what I really fell in love with network marketing. I grew a lot in that business and they really taught me what it's all about. And I just, I mean, I was so passionate about the industry and the company. Um, and then they always say that the grass is greener on the other side because it's fake. So think about the people who leave you because they say, oh, I'm going to this other company. It's much better. The grass is always greener on the other side. Yeah, it could be better. So I took a leap of faith and went to CPG, which um, Frito-Lay, and they offered me the world. I mean, these guys were after me for a while. They offered me the world. Uh, I thought it was going to be a great company. They have great products, but the culture was very different. So to me, the culture is something that is super important, no matter where you are, especially if it's my corporate job, right, my career, because you spend more time working than you actually spend at home, except for the weekends. If you think about it, the time that you spend working is a lot more than the time you spend just alone with your family. That's kind of sad, isn't it? But it's the truth. And so to me, culture is super important. So after a year and a half, they actually eliminated my role. They were going to transfer me to Chicago. And they're like, oh, we're eliminating the eight people that have the same job in the U.S. So we're going to give you a package. And I actually decided to take some time off and find myself. And I did a crazy thing at the time. And actually, I'm divorced. So my ex-husband thought that I was crazy because I said, I'm going to go to Costa Rica for eight days and seven nights to a yoga retreat. And I need you to drop me at the airport this day and pick me up. And he was like, wait, you've never been there. You don't know anybody there. Why are you going? I'm like, I need to go. It's time for me to go. And I went, I was fine. I speak Spanish. So I'm like, I can understand the language. So I'm not going to feel afraid. I, I don't understand what they're saying. I left and I came back like a new person. I was so relaxed and I was just ready to get back into the industry and conquer the world. And I interviewed with six different companies and got hired by Rodan and Fields. I didn't know at the time how big isogenics was. Um, so I went to Rodan and Fields, which actually gave me a perspective on social commerce. And Carmen, you muted yourself. It muted by itself. That's really weird. <laughs> so what was I? I was talking about getting hired by Rodan and Fields. Yes. Okay. So they're very similar to Isogenics, but Isogenics is much larger. They're a $1.5 billion company. In its skincare, um, they've added a, what do you call it, auxiliary, so like new products, but it's really mainly skincare. But it was all through virtual, all through Facebook, Instagram, social commerce. That's all they did. A lot of events. A lot of events that started in the beginning, it was all in hotel rooms. And then as I continue my career, 
I think that events have to be fun and the times of sitting at a hotel room in front of a big PowerPoint are over. People get bored and they get intimidated by that. So for me, it's that experience that you have while you're an event. So I created more of a pop-up event environment on my last year with them, which was really trying the products, having somebody do, they have um, Dermac Cosmetics. So it was like a, found, a foundation that was Dermac Cosmetics, not really a foundation, but they can get a mini uh, makeover. We would have, um, you know, of course, wine or beer served, and then a loop of our products. So it's really more of a pop-up, like a gallery experience with music. And we had a lot of success doing that because people thought it was different. It was more casual. They didn't feel as pressure as sitting in a room and watching a PowerPoint. And so after that, I got um, hired by a startup company that does plant-based products. And I went in as a national director to launch the company. And boy, I had to go back to my recruiting times. Like how many of you are like, oh my God, I have to enroll people. I have to talk to 20 people to get two people a day. How many of you like call a lot of people consistently to try to enroll? Raise your hand if you do, right? So I started this company from scratch with them. I had to do everything. I had to do the marketing, the training, the business presentation, the calling, the finding, sourcing. And so after about five months, I was like, this is not what I thought I was signing up to do. Like I've done this before and I liked it, but I thought it was at a different place. And unfortunately, because of COVID last year, they folded in April. So once again, I was like, huh, what am I going to do now? Right. And again, took the summer, first time in my life that I have no kids in the summer. I have no responsibilities in the summer. So I just travel the summer, not, not abroad or anything, but just to like different areas in the country to explore the U.S., and then got hired by Isogenics. And I tell you, three things that are really important that really impressed me. One, it's our global expansion. So they were very smart at acquiring CJA. Because if you've been in any other company, you know that opening a new country takes forever most of the time. Because you have to go through their regulations, their government, um, what you can sell in that country, some ingredients. They're not legal in some countries. So for example... In Australia, at Rodan and Fields, you couldn't sell products with SPF. You had to sell something else because of um, the sun is so potent there that they had to be prescribed in Australia. So anything that had SPF, you, have to be, you couldn't sell it from Rodan and Fields. Um, in, in Canada, you couldn't sell Lash Boost. So, you know, every country is different. So by us acquiring CJA and expanding to all those countries, it makes it a lot easier for you to expand your business globally. So you know if you have people in other countries, you need to get an international sponsorship and you can start building your business in other countries. That is something that is not very normal. And to really grow from like four or five countries to now like 24, 26 countries, that's huge, right? The second thing that really impressed me was, to be honest with you, Kathy Cooper. That woman, it's amazing. I mean, she is on our calls every Monday to the regional fields. We have a call every Monday. She shows up on the call. She interacts with us. She asks us questions. She wants to help out. I asked her to be in a call with a few people that I did a challenge with. She said, no problem. So, you know, she is so vested in the business. You don't see that in a lot of founders of companies. After a while, they just, they're done, right? They sell the company or I mean, even with that and Phil's, I had to keep bringing them back up. But the doctors were like secret. Like if you wanted to talk to the doctors, you have to make an appointment. You have to talk to PR. You have to do so many things. She's not like that. Like you can just email her and, and she's just there all the time. She's so good at it. And so to me, that meant that the founders still really care a lot about the business and about the company. And the third thing was the culture. Not only the field culture, but my team culture, my peers. So I report to Aaron Wagner, and then he reports to Mac Larson. Um, I have about five peers in the U.S. I don't know if you guys know, like Cal. Um, we got Mike Melroy. You got um, Scott Anderson, Chris Nish, and then we have Tracy and Alfonso in Canada, and Mildred. She's um, the Hispanic director in the U.S. So our team. If you can have fun and make fun of each other in a nice way, but still get the work done, that to me is a place that I want to be, right? Because it's where I spend most of my time. It's where I spend most of my time talking to. And so those three things are super important to me. And why do I see in isogenics? I mean, 
I knew that collagen elixir was going to be big, but I didn't know how big it was going to be. Right. Like I think about all the enrollments that have happened since January 8th and we're only on March 16th, you guys, it hasn't even been a, a whole quarter. It is huge. It is crazy. And I know they're working on, on things to expedite the orders, but people still want them. Even if they have to wait, they still want it. So it's a good thing to have that high demand and just think of what can come ahead in the future, right? Like what things can come in the future that are going to be exciting for the business. I want to switch gears now into being resilient and building a team and what is important of both. And so um, I'm going to ask you, because this has happened to me, even though I'm a corporate, how many of you have had somebody, and perhaps you might not, that you have enrolled in your team and you've spent so much time with them, building them, building them. And then all of a sudden they tell you, I am not happy. I don't think I'm making enough money and I'm going to go do something else. Right. I've had several and it's like, what, what are you doing? So um, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I'm going to, I'm going to share with you a couple of things that are very important that I've experienced and I've heard others experience in their life. So the first time that happened to me, I was devastated because it was somebody that I was spending the majority of my time. Um, I was helping her build her business. I helped her earn all these bonuses. And all of a sudden she's like, no, I don't think I'm making any money. And even though I went back and pulled up all the money she made, I'm like, you know, you've made in the last three months about $6,000. And that doesn't count your sales. That's just in bonuses of the people that you brought on board. What did you do with the money? Like, do you know where the money went? She's like, no, I really don't, but I don't want to stay here. And so I rather stay with the people that want to be here and want to keep going forward than trying to convince somebody to stay with me because that energy is going to drag you. It dragged me. I was, again, devastated. And then I would go out because we were like buddies recruiting. We would go out together and try to enroll people. And so I had to do it on my own until I find another superstar. So what I learned from that is not to put all my eggs in one basket. Yes, dedicate time to that person, but still continue to build others that I start encountering in the business so that in case this person leaves, I still have this all these other folks that I can work with, right? Because we're looking for stars. We're looking for people that are like us, that are driven, that want to grow the business. And if we only concentrate on one person and don't develop others, that can happen. And then we have to start from scratch. So that's part of being resilient and continue to build the business. Why do you want to build managers in your businesses? Now, how many of you have between five to 10 managers in your team? And if you don't, that's fine. Okay. So this is the reason. I'm, are any of you in the call not managers? Is everybody here a manager and above? Okay. So why, why do you want to build managers? What do you think is that? And you're going to mute and tell me. I know you're not shy. They're getting their products paid for and some probably if they're a manager. Okay. What else? It's, it's creating depth and longevity. And even if that one person quits, then you've at least tapped into their network. Okay. What else? That's good. They know how to rank advanced people. They've proven that. Yes. And at manager pool at Isogenics, when they start making some serious money, right? That's where we start participating in the pools. And if they're not comfortable with the pools and somebody is not, please let me know because the pools is where they're making additional money. That's where a manager can earn up to $1,000 a month, a director up to $2,500 a, more, a month. And then the executives, right? You got your executive lifestyle bonus. Now we got the four-star death bonus and you have the five-star death bonus as well. And so for that one, it's the four-star death bonus, is about $5,000 a month max that somebody can make. That is serious money. So if I'm coming to the business and I've had people that are like, you know, I really need $1,000 extra a month on income. I'm like, okay, we got to get you to manager. We got to get you to manager because you're going to get all these bonuses, right? From enrolling people on your sales and your cycles. But then when you get to the pool, that is something that you can work on that you know the maximum that you can earn is $1,000 every month. 
then from there, we're going to get you to director. So I always say that associates and consultants is the beginning of the journey, but really at manager level and above is where you start building that consistency in that residual income that makes a difference. Do you guys know the average family goes on bankruptcy for about $300 or $400 a month? So if you can get them to earn that extra a month, that is big. And at $1,000, it just makes a huge difference. That is a car payment. That is college tuition. Hey, I got two kids that are adults. I'm still paying for their cell phones. That's still cell phone bills. So anything extra really adds up and really helps with, you know, with what they're trying to do with their family. So the other thing that I wanted to share is that sometimes we get so um, focused on you know, becoming a team member and, and getting them to be a leader and all that. And the industry, 10% of your team recruiting, it's really good. So look at your team and see what the average of people on your team are actually enrolling people. If you have less than 10%, then try to set a goal to get to 10% of your total team enrolling others. And 20%, it's the benchmark for top sellers. So people that are just selling at a high level. Um, of course, as you start growing, that 10% is going to go up, right? Because if I had 100 people, that means 10 of them should be enrolling or I should target to 10. And if I have 200, then I'm going to try to target to 20 people. So as you keep growing, that 10% will continue to grow. But what would happen if I'm going to share with you a story that is actually my personal story. What would happen if you've worked so hard for something and all of a sudden it falls apart? So I'm going to share a personal story. So um, Heidi mentioned that I love CrossFit. I'm actually an avid, I've been doing it now for almost three years. And back in December, I was, um, I was working out and something personal happened that I was pretty angry in the morning. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to work out and let it all out through my workout. Well, while doing that, I lifted too much weight and I hurt my back. And that propelled me to stay out for three weeks. Now, if you ever worked out, if you ever run, any of you run or work out or do anything, uh, Orange Theory or anything that you love, you know that that's kind of like your, your therapy, right? Like your fueling that you do every day to keep going. So if you get that taken out for three weeks, it's pretty detrimental. Plus the pain was unbearable for the first week. There's two things I could have done. I could have just tried to go back and keep getting hurt and not be able to do it. Or I could have followed the doctor's rules, right? Like the prescription and say, Hey, you need to stay out for at least two weeks and we'll give you therapy, medication, see how you do. Or I could have completely quit and start something new. And so I decided to follow the doctor's rules, go to therapy, go to medication and start to build back again. But with doing that, what happens is I started back from where I started. So I started back from where I started almost three years ago in weight wise, because I couldn't lift as much. So it's taking baby steps to get back to where I was and I'm progressing, but I'm not there yet. It's only been two months. So I'm, I'm working on it. I'm progressing and keeping a positive mind for me is as long as I can go in and do something, I'm happy. I'm not going to be happy if I cannot do anything at all. So why am I telling you this? Because sometimes we encounter a lot of challenges in our business that makes us put a fast stop. And there's three things that we can do. We can completely quit and forget about all the hard work we put into it. Or we can say, you know what? I'm going to go back and look at how I started and follow those steps. Maybe I'm going to look at some videos of people that are telling me things that they're doing that it's really helping them. Or I'm just going to take baby steps and combine everything and ask a mentor to help me, to hold me accountable during this time so that I can continue to build and build up. Because in this business, you know that people sometimes come and go. And with collagen, it's exciting, right? All these people are coming, these people are coming. But what if they stop coming? Then you're like, what happened? Like, I'm not doing this. So you just got to keep going and building that business, building that funnel consistently. It's like baby steps because you never know what's going to happen. I know that we're excited and I, I know that it's going to continue to grow. But the funnel, the funnel is the fundamental. It's kind of going back to lowering the weights and starting to increase the weights. The funnel is what's going to help you continue to build your business. So here's some numbers that you want to, might want to take so you can think about this. If you, if you um, reach out to 10 people a week, just 10 people a week, 
one in 10 is going to say yes. It's either going to say yes to the business or they're going to say, yeah, I'm going to buy products from you. That's just it, the industry average. So 10 people a week in four weeks, that's 40. So you're going to get four new people in a month, right? And in 10 months, we make it easy. That's going to be 40 people. So if you want to grow your, your business at a slow, steady pace, you can do that. But what if you want to take massive action? What if you decide, you know what? I'm going to take advantage of this collagen and I'm going to contact as many people as possible. And I'm going to set a, a goal that by the end of each month, I want to have at least 10 new enrollments. Now that sounds like a lot, but this is a hot product. So I want to take advantage of this hot product. So in order for me to have that, I'm going to set a goal that I'm going to contact five people a day, Monday through Fridays, or maybe I'll take Mondays and Tuesdays off, but five people a day, five days a week. That's 25 people in a month. That's a hundred people. And that gives you your one in 10, right? So that's 10 people in one month. If you do that consistently, it's new people. So it's not like I'm going to have this 25 people that this hundred people that I contacted this month. I'm going to contact them now for the next 10 months on and on and on and on and on. No, you're going to keep adding every month, a hundred people because one in 10 will say yes. And somebody today might say, I'm not ready today, but maybe five months down the road, when you use the penny app and it tells you to follow the customers, then you can follow up with them and then see that they're still interested or that it's the time for them now. Right. If you do that for 10 months, you would have a hundred enrollments in 10 months. Now think about what would do, what would that do for your business? What would a hundred enrollments do for your business? Who wants to share? What do you think it would do to your business if you get a hundred enrollments every month? I mean, in 10 months. Well, it would get a lot of people excited, right? It would create great momentum. And um, it would like, like I, I, I would see excitement, like let's say you sign someone up and then you sign all those people up. Then that person, you could say, hey, you've got 20 team members under you already, or you have 30 mm -hmm. team members under you already. So it creates a momentum and easy way to share the business. That's right. You already have team members. And imagine if you can teach this, because we know everybody's not going to do it, right? But if you can teach this to 10% of that 100 enrollments, that's 10 people that you would have starting building their businesses with people under them, right? Because that is the ultimate goal, 10% of your total team. And that's not even counting the people you already have. This is just brand new people, right? So you're going to be like, oh, that's a lot of people. Okay, do you have three meals a day or you have a snack or something? I like to break it down even into smaller pieces. You're going to call two people when you have breakfast, two people when you have lunch, and one person for dinner. That's five people a day. And one thing that somebody taught me that um, looking for my phone, oh. this was something that a leader taught me that, you know, sometimes we meet people and we're like, yeah, I would like to, I think she'll be great for my business, but I don't know. She wants to give me her phone and I'm just, I don't know. And you're afraid to ask them for their contact, but you want to have their contact because you think they're going to be great. This is what she did. And I was like, oh, it works great. What they can say, no, it's like, you know what? I really enjoy our conversation today. Why don't I find you on Facebook and let's be friends here. What's your name? Okay. I'm going to send you my friend request. Oh, I got you. Great. I'm going to follow up with you. And so like, do you mind giving me your phone number? Is that just showing more confidence? And I don't know if you guys do that, but she did that. And it works like magic. I do it all the time now just to get context to add to my list. It's like, love our conversation. We'd love for you to be my friend. If you're ever in town, Hey, let's connect. And then just do it. It's not awkward. You're not, Sounding like a salesy person. Oh, I love your earrings. Oh, I love your shirt. And then you go to like the, you know, salesmanship. I mean, I don't know how many of you have gone through that, but I have been through that a lot. We're like, we'd love for you to join my business. No, let's start a friendship first and then continue and then enroll them into the business. And that's still a reach out, right? That's still connecting with one person. So if you can teach 10 people on your team to do that, imagine what would happen to your business. And why am I telling you 10? Because I know that 10 people are not going to do it. If I tell you to do five, three people might do it, right? But if I tell you 10, then you have a potential that seven or six of them will do it. And that makes a big difference. Every time you set a goal, set a stretch goal. Because when you set a stretch goal, 
it just expands you to achieve what you really want to achieve. If you just set a, a specific goal and you hit that goal, but a lot of times it's hard to hit that specific goal. So you want to have a stretch goal that really is going to get you to where you want to go at a faster pace. Does that make sense? Okay. So resilience, those, that funnel, building that funnel on a daily basis. Heck, if you just do three a day, just three a day, right? So three times five is 15 times four, right? It's 60. It's one in 10. You get six, just three a day. But let's do five because what if you get the 10 in a month, right? So I always said, like, set, again, set the stretch goal. Don't go for the lower. What do people say? Like, shoot for the moon in case you land on the clouds, something like that. So when it should, you want to shoot for what you can hire instead of going for like just the, just the minimum and so that you can really achieve those big goals. I'm going to stop with that. And I'm going to see if you guys have any questions that you might want to ask me about the business, anything I can tell you about isogenics besides what new products are coming. Some people think I can tell them that, but I cannot um, because I really don't know. <laughs> they won't tell me so until they're about to be launched. So any questions or anything that you want to know about the industry or the business? I have yep. a question, Carmen. So I asked earlier in the chat yeah. if you could compare that Rodan and Fields Lash Boost launch to our collagen launch, because you said that you'd never seen anything like it. But mm -hmm. could you actually give us a little bit of the numbers so that we understand how really dynamic this, this launch was compared to anything you've ever seen? Yes. So, I mean, the amount of sales that we've had just in this short period of time, it's crazy. And it's something that is consumable. So they're <coughs> going to have to repeat over and over and over, right? Um, Lash Boost, while it was meant to be used for three months, some people got the results after two months or three months, and they just took longer to order their next Lash Boost. So normally, uh, a skincare regimen is set to be um, last for 60 days. So, you know, you're going to have that repeat business six times a year. Lash boost was meant to be the same, but people were extending the use of the actual lash boost for three months. So they only repeat it three to four times a year. So they made less money if they only sold lash boost because it was not being repeated. The, the, the purchase was not repeated as often as they needed it to be because the results were lasting longer. They didn't sell 6 million lash boost in three months. They did it. But what I would tell you is like when we run out of lash boost one summer for three weeks, it was chaos. <laughs> so, um, but yes, I, I've just never seen the enrollments. The enrollments were just insane in the first so month get, of collagen. I get that. But I'm just really curious about like that first month as far as sales, like units sold. Um, I mean, did we exceed Rodan and Fields tenfold or, um, you know, like just kind of trying to get it in my head as far as how big this launch was. I understand the fulfillment of their auto ships and so on. Ironically, I just moved my lash boost out today um, but, uh, because it is lasting a lot longer. And I mean, I'm even using it on my brows, but I don't really have to now that I'm taking collagen. So I, I moved it out, I think three more months, but as far as our collagen goes, um, just really how we did rate, how we did compare on our launch of this amazing product? Well, I don't know the exact numbers they had, but it was not 6 million. Okay. I know that for sure. So well, that's probably more considered not 6 million since it's per bottle and we've got 10 bottles in each box. I'm thinking units, thinking a box would be a unit. It's still about what? That's a very it. price point too, though. The, their lash boost so is different. 100 and one box of collagen is like, what, a quarter of So that? maybe even just four packs. I, I'm just trying to think of that number because I think that we could use that to help bring some Rodan and Fields gals on over um, if I could get some accurate numbers. Yeah, I can try to find out what the number was when they first launched it. Um, but I don't have the, I don't know the actual number. I just know that it was not the amount that we have right now. Cool. Um, because if it was, I would have heard it when I was there. It was one of their biggest launches. But yeah. the other thing is 
even after that, they have never had been able to bring anything else like that since um, Flash Boost. Like every other launch they've had, you know, like at convention, you usually have like a new launch, something huge. And last year's convention was the new formulation of um, Redefine. So I still have a lot of friends and I sat there and I was like, rah, rah, like that's not, that to me wasn't exciting. I was expecting something different. Um, so they have not been able to do that, but I'll find out and let you guys know. That'd be a good I can go back and have. let you know. I don't know if you guys, if you guys feel the same way, but you know, I, I know it was a good launch and I know that we did our work and that was really, really proof in the fact that we sold so much of it. I think that we did so much work that they were almost not really ready for that amount of work that we did. Um, but because they launched it, you know, pre-launched it in Australia, we had a pretty good idea how to do it and how to market it. And they did such a beautiful job giving us the marketing pieces. Um, but I'm just, again, so, you know, just blown away by, by how it has just really allowed us to really put it into gear and go. It's been amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And to continue because the sales have not slowed down. Right. Yeah. Speaking of Australia, I have a question, Carmen. We must at this point, because Australia launched well before us, even though I know they sold out. Um, what are the statistics as far as retention with people who come in with the collagen? That's got to be way higher than any of our other products, I'm thinking. <laughs> you mean in Australia or the U.S.? Well, in Australia, we're only two months in, so... But oh. so we would have very short term retention results, but they must have some retention results. And I'd love those numbers. I don't have those numbers. So I hate to give you a number that I don't know, um, but I can find out as well. Okay. And then my other question, uh, I think uh, up here somewhere. But I would tell you so before I, you ask me the next question um, that, like I mentioned, the sales have not slowed down. So even with the launch back in January, the sales continue to be very steady. They haven't gone backwards, if that it's makes sense. Incredible, And pretty much almost all of my customers um, have, you know, they're like, wait, I just got my stuff and my auto ship's coming up. And I say, well, keep it because we're still behind. So they're keeping their auto ship as is for now. There might be a little, you know, glut at some point where they're getting stuff more quickly, which yeah. is fine. But um I think that's fantastic that because so many times we're like, oh, I still have a bunch of shakes left and I still have a bunch of this left and I still didn't finish that. So I'm going to cancel it or postpone it or whatever. And I'm not seeing that happening here, which is awesome. And one thing I saw, um, I will share, like, I don't know if you guys do this, but I was asking Taylor because when I was being trained on the products, I used the AMP products and with the AMP products. And then when you're doing the cleansing and then ionics and all that, I was like, how many drinks do you need a day? Like, I can't drink so much stuff. It's, it seems very overwhelming to me. And they're like, oh no, we just put them on the shake. So I put the Ionic on the shake and I put the um, amp on the shake and I just, and it's all in one drink. I'm like, oh, that's, I don't know if anybody does that. But I was like, oh, that's brilliant. Cause I was just like, oh my God, how many drinks am I gonna have taken all day? Like, that's a lot of stuff to drink, but they just add them on the shake and um, it makes a shake tastes good too, so. Okay. And then you had mentioned if we can get 10% of our customers sharing, how would we calculate that? Especially like my team is, um, I don't know when the last time they trimmed the tree, but I, I'm 15 years in, almost 16 years in. So my ratio of non-renews is probably high, much higher than somebody mm -hmm. who's new. Um, so how would I even begin to calculate that? I would look at your total active and then calculate from your total active people that are normally ordering. I mean, you might want to just use your preferred customers as an example, as a base, but I would just use your active people that are normally using. I don't know if you can see that on your back office because I'm not as familiar with your reporting, but I will look at your active people that you have right now and that will be 10% of that. We only have We only have access to that for our personally enrolled, not for our team. And a lot, most of my growth right now is coming like seven PETN. So send me a message with your name, a member ID number, and I see if I can get something for you. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Do you know where our, the collagen that we have will be launched next in, in what part of the world? 
I know it's going to be launched in Europe, um, but right now we're trying to figure out to get the process in the U.S. to be stable before it's launched in any other country. So we want to stabilize the U.S. sales because it's the largest country, the largest market for us. So once we get that stable, stabilized, I know it's going to be launched in Europe as well. Okay, thank you. And and I you know I was just looking at uh, Mexico and I noticed they have a collagen. It's a raspberry collagen, but it's a powder. I'm assuming it's kind of like our bovine collagen that we have. You know anything I'm not that? very familiar with their product. I know it's collagen, but again, remember I mentioned that in some countries they have different regulations. Yeah. And so that's, you know, it's bottle in the country. It's got it different. Um, I'm trying to think of the, uh, not ingredients, but. But even marketing is different and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So ultimately as an international company, the goal is that at some point, right, we start transitioning some of the products. So they're global products and you don't have to worry about, oh, do we have a license in this country? Do we have a license in the other country? So I know that in some other companies, the goal is as they become global and they continue to expand that a lot of the new launches are a global launch. So Australia will get it and Canada will get it and Mexico will get it. Everybody will get it at the same time versus individual countries. But I don't think that we're there yet. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Global launches are exciting. They take a little longer, but very exciting. But I think I, I love that we do it right. You know, we really have boots on the ground and not just a, a website and stuff. So that's really been great. One thing I did want to ask about, apparently there isn't, um, according to Mike, um, there isn't sort of a standardized regional recognition protocol at this point. And I have a team in Puerto Rico that just took off like crazy. Like, I mean, she, her best week, she enrolled 15 people. Oh, wow. She, she heard nothing. From, I mean, I recognized her obviously, but she heard nothing from anybody, for, you know, her regional or whatever. So I'm just wondering if, is that something that you guys are exploring? Do you think that's a good idea? Cause I think it's sometimes I see recognition from another region and I go, oh, that's so cool how they're doing that. I wish I could, you know what I mean? Like it's not. Yeah. So um, I love Cal, but I also hate Cal <laughs> <laughs> because I'm, I'm like, really, really, you're going to go there that route. Like, how do you find time to all that? So, but no, they are working on a more standardized recognition for all the regions, but there's no reason why you couldn't reach out to that regional and say, hey, this girl, it's my, in my team. She's in Puerto Rico. She enrolled 15 people. Can you send her a message shout out? Because that will mean the world to her. And I mean, I do it all the time. I get texts and messages and I don't mind doing it. It takes no time for us to do it. And we love doing it. But they, so, don't, they don't even have a group for recognition. Like they, there's nothing in place. So, you know, recognition, we don't give the Oscars out in private. Yeah, so. they are, aren't they part of the South region? Puerto Rico is part of the South region, the Southeast region. Which is under um, Scott Anderson is the regional director. Okay, because I was told it's under Mildred because they're considered Hispanic a Hispanic region. Which um, it's the Hispanic region is a little bit confusing sometimes because just because you're Latino doesn't mean you don't speak English, right? So I will be considered not in the Hispanic region because I'm fluent in in English. And a lot of the people in Puerto Rico are also fluent because we grew up speaking two languages that's taught in school when we're growing up. So it depends what her choice is. So if she only wants Spanish materials, then she's oh, part no, of that. No, no, they're, he's a doc, her husband's a doctor. They're very affluent. They're, yeah, it's, so who should I- It'd be funny to? if I know them because I know a lot of people from the island, but um, yeah, just reach oh, out to Dr. Scott and let him know. Scott Dr. Anderson. Dr. Dr. Pedro Beauchamp is a top fertility doctor there and has been for decades, so. Okay. You said Beauchamp? Beauchamp, Christine and Pedro Beauchamp. I have friends of Beauchamp. It could be funny if they're actually related to them. I don't know. <laughs> it's a small island, you know, it's only 31 miles north to south and 100 east to west, so. <laughs> Any other questions? Nope. Well, I hope you guys are excited. I hope that you learned something today. And again, if you need anything, any support, or you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I will get back to you guys on the questions about the sales of 
Lash boost. Actually, I have one of my best friends just left Rodan Fields and she can spill the beans and tell me how many they sold because she was there. Um, <laughs> and then on the retention on collagen as well. So, but super excited what is coming ahead, um, what we have coming this year. And I, I'm going actually this week to headquarters for the first time in my life. Um, I have never been to headquarters. I got hired over Zoom. Can you believe that? <laughs> so um, I get to see headquarters for the first time and meet some of the folks there this week. Super excited. And hopefully we'll have events coming soon. I had my first vaccine last week, so I'm excited to get the second one, but um, hopefully we'll get some events coming in the near future that we can meet in person and get to know each other. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I, I do have a quick question. I just want to, sure. uh, you said the, um, you mentioned a call a, on the collagen that was from um, Taylor Malham. She's actually our speaker next week. Uh huh. Um, what is the um? What was it called? I put the link in. I put the link here in comments, Heidi. I'm oh, sure. oh, excellent. It's it's Wednesday. It's Well Being Wednesday. Paul's and she well did the training on collagen. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, there's tons so of much. there's tons of resources in there, and one of the things I did when I started was just listen to some of those calls. Um, you know, if you need to learn more about social media, Robin Belfray does a great call on social media, very down to earth. I mean, she tells you like when she started, how bad she was and where she is today. And she's like, make sure you have duct tape in your purse so you can tape your phone to whatever you go. I was like, wow, really? But, um, I mean, she is, she's so energetic, so full of energy, so crazy sometimes, but you know, she's very real and very down to earth. So um, I would listen to her social media call as well. She's great at that. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to go do that now. Appreciate your help. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, for, thank you so much for taking the time. Does anybody else have any more questions at all? Carmen, are you on Instagram? Yes. What is your handle? Uh, my Instagram handle is CarmenGo15, but I also have um, Isogenic Central Region. It's the Isogenics name. And then at Isogenics is Carmen Lopez Isogenics. It's my Isogenics Facebook account. Did you say Isogenics 15? No, um, Carmen Go 15 is my Instagram. And then Isogenics Central is my Isogenics okay. Central Region Instagram account. Gotcha. Found you. There's a lot of doggy pictures. Yes, I do foster puppies. I my last foster was three puppies. I thought I was going to lose my mind, so I'm taking a little break after having them for a month. Um, but I do love them. It's like something that brings joy, right? So thanks again, ladies and gentlemen. And um, again, hope you have a great rest of your week. Happy St. Patty's Day, um, Carmen O. Lopez. Tomorrow, just for the day. And um, if you need anything or you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer anything I can. If I can't answer, I will tell you, I can tell you. So um, feel free to reach out and message me if you need anything and I can wait to see your success moving forward. Thank Thanks you so me. much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have Thank a great you, day. Thank, Thank you so much. <clears throat>